Welcome to Mind Balance Yoga. I'm Dr. Sarah Morrow, and I'm a child psychologist, and I teach therapeutic yoga. And in this program, Mind Balance Yoga, my intention is to bring together the healing benefits of a mindful yoga practice with the science of Western psychology. And I really came to be a psychologist that teaches yoga through my own experience of how beneficial and healing I found mindful, gentle yoga to be for myself. And being a psychologist, I think we always are driven with some curiosity to want to understand how humans work and how this complex mind-body system works. And after many years of realizing yoga was my kind of favorite way to therapeutically take care of myself, I started to dive into the research and to explore what do we know? What did the yogis believe <clears throat> was happening through yoga practice that was healing? And what do we know through modern science to be able to have measurable data about changes in the brain, the nervous system, the biochemistry of the body, and ultimately healing? And I love this saying, this quote from BKS Iyengar, he was one of the kind of founding fathers that brought yoga to the West. He was a very sickly child who, as a teenager, was introduced to yoga. And it was through that that he was able to heal his body fully. And he lived to be 96 years old. He just died a few years ago. And Iyengar says that yoga teaches us to cure what need not be endured and endure what cannot be cured. And I am so thrilled that we now have modern science and research methods to be able to prove this to be true. We now know that yoga, when practiced gently, safely, mindfully, is a way that we kind of bring ourselves into optimal health and optimal well-being. So we know that it's probably one of the most effective ways to shift the entire physiology the entire function of the brain, the nervous system, our biochemistry, our immune system, our endocrine system with hormones, and that yoga moves us toward a better state in mindset, in mood. We know that yoga helps to reduce suffering. We're using yoga therapeutically for lots of people who have trauma now, and of course, people going through medical crises. And we know that over time, if we practice yoga mindfully, we become more resilient. We are simply able to handle life Life better and get through hardship with more ease and success. So the mind-body system is pretty complicated. There's a constant flow of communication between your brain, your nervous system that flows throughout the body, and your gut, your actual enteric nervous system is what we call the gut. And there's a vagus nerve that goes from the brain down through the spinal cord and then goes out through the body and connects with all the organs of the body. And the vagus nerve is essentially the communication highway between the mind and the body. And that communication occurs through chemical messengers that travel through the vagus nerve and essentially tell the brain whether or not the body is okay whether or not you are safe and well. And some of those chemical messengers are our hormones and our neurotransmitters. Like to know that the vast majority of your serotonin, they say 95% of your serotonin production originates in the gut. And that is how we have neurotransmitters um, come to the brain and helps create mood stability for us. So it's really fascinating as we start to understand all the pieces of the body. Uh, more and more, we're understanding how important the microbiome is. All of the uh, microorganisms that live within the, the digestive system are your key um, kind of workers to create hormones and neurotransmitters or precursors to neurotransmitters. And they're hugely important in regulating your nervous system. So one thing that we've come to realize is that we are also not just genetically stuck with the genes that we have or we were born with, but that how we create our environment, how we take care of ourselves or not, how we think, how we breathe, are constantly shifting the genetic expression, how our genes are actually functioning in the body. And so we have choice in everyday moments to figure out what choices would help move me toward a state of wellness and happiness and physical well-being and what choices am I kind of inhabit with or reactive, you know, automatic reactions that are not serving me well. So I'm probably a little cliche in saying to all my therapy clients and even my yoga students, without awareness, you have no power. That perhaps is my catchphrase as a yoga teaching psychologist.
And Viktor Frankl also said, our freedom is in the pause between the stimulus and the response. And so awareness is really the foundation to what allows yoga to become a very healing and therapeutic experience. So mindfulness sounds pretty easy. It's just about paying attention with the goal being to not be judgmental, to just experience the present moment fully and trying to be curious and accepting without fighting against what you observe. So we can, of course, be aware of our senses. What am I seeing, smelling, hearing, feeling in touch? Um, my breath, you know, knowing that I'm breathing in and breathing out and realizing there's a choice to initiate that diaphragm to guide the breath, to breathe lower in the lungs, to slow the exhale, to find that pause between inhale and exhale. Uh, we work on awareness of thoughts. So the mind is constantly in motion. We have between 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day, which is nearly a thought per second. And through mindfulness practice, we learn to notice how the brain automatically thinks. And then from awareness, we have some power, some choice to shift our perspective, to come to things like acceptance and appreciation, compassion, kindness, maybe impermanence, realizing that each moment will pass and we can move forward. So we learn to notice thoughts, so then we have some power to work with our mind and our mindset. And we can become mindful of emotion, to be able to pause and notice, what am I feeling right now? I feel anxious. I feel overwhelmed. I'm so frustrated. And from that emotional awareness, again, you're empowered to do something to take care of yourself. And then the last part of mindfulness involves social interaction which we talked about last class on interpersonal mindfulness. Um, mindfulness in our relationships being a really essential foundational skill to be able to have healthy and sustainable relationships over time. And it's really just about recognizing each other's personal feelings and experience and needs and having compassion to each other. So Mindfulness helps us to be aware of our automatic reactions to life, our automatic behaviors that have become habitual that may not be serving as well. And if we can be aware, then we can increase the chances that we'll respond to life's challenges in an effective way, rather than kind of disempowered, just driven by emotional reactions. So every day we have choice. And in therapeutic yoga, I'm trying to help you practice realizing all the components that come together to create your experience of life. And so one of those things that we work on is posture and body tension. So as you may know, my regular students, we do a lot of heart opening work in my classes because the stress response self-protectively holds us here in this tension in the shoulders and neck, this forward curve that's self-protective. And in yoga, we work to open and release that tension. Smiling is a wonderful choice we make in our body, even if it's just a gentle shift in the energy of the eyes, just towards that loving gaze that gives feedback to your nervous system that I'm safe, I'm well, in this moment I'm okay. How we breathe is so important, and so we thankfully breathe automatically, but through emotional stress and trauma, we tend to get a restricted range of breath over time. And what we know is that the slower you breathe, the longer you will live. And so we learn through yoga to be aware of the breath, so that we can make a choice to initiate the kind of nose to diaphragm breathing that we practice. Inhaling through the nose allows us to access the diaphragm more easily, to draw the breath low into the lungs, and those lower nerve endings initiating our parasympathetic nervous system, our relaxation response, versus automatic breathing that's probably through the mouth and shallow, up high in the lungs, and maybe very choppy or irregular or too fast. And so learning how to be aware of your breath and regulate your breath to feel well is a huge benefit in therapeutic yoga. Awareness of thoughts, to notice how we have automatic anger and judgment and fear that drives a lot of our thinking, and from awareness to be able to shift toward a mindset that feels so much better and allows us to be healthier. Um, all of these pieces come together for us to be able to feel a little more confidence, a little bit more empowered, that even though there's tough moments that arise, inevitably life can be very hard, that we do have a choice in each moment to pause, 
to notice what's happening within us, to notice what's happening in interaction with another person. And from that awareness, we have a choice. We can choose response. And that's where we find our empowerment and our confidence to live our best life and to know that we can move ourselves toward optimal health and optimal well-being. So today we'll do just a really nice um, kind of gentle practice and I'll sort of be reviewing a little bit of the cause and effect. Why do we do this in yoga? What happens when we do this? So trying to help you have more of a scientific understanding of the physiological cause and effect that occurs when we practice yoga in this mindful way. So I hope it'll be a nice practice for everybody. As always, one thing we do in yoga here is practice meditation at the beginning of class and at the end of class to help us really carve out a little bit of time to find stillness and quiet, which is just a challenge to do on our own. So I'm going to relocate so we can start our sitting practice to begin class. If you have a pillow or a folded blanket to sit on, that'll give you a little bit more optimal uh, body position just to get the most out of your meditation experience. Give me just a second to relocate to my mat. So using props in yoga is optional. And actually, it was Iyengar who first introduced props as a way to take yoga and make it accessible to everybody, a way that we can honor the limits in our bodies, challenge ourselves to find each pose, but with support as needed. And so I do encourage you at the very minimum to have a blanket to sit on for meditation or a little pillow to sit on. And in Shavasana, to have a nice support under the neck and perhaps under the knees. And so those things alone can offer us a more therapeutic and healing experience through yoga. So as you find a place on your cushion, go ahead and sit cross leg if you like with the legs crossed at mid shin, always keeping the feet a little farther away from the hips so there's not too much weight of the legs pressing down. Or to go a little more traditionally into a yoga pose, we take one foot to the midline of the body and then set the other foot right in front of the first, aligning the heels with the center of the body. And then you'll always see me do this little side to side motion, just drawing the actual flesh of the thighs outward to find a strong connection through the sitting bones. The sitting bones matter because from there, everything above the sitting bones finds alignment. So as we feel a good connection through the sitting bones, we're able to level the pelvis. And from a level pelvis, we support our natural curvature of the spine. So from here, rolling the shoulders up, squeeze them back. And this lets the shoulders fall away from the ears. The hands might slide in towards you to allow the shoulders to just release all effort. And as we lengthen through the heart, through the crown of the head, we're trying to find a little more space between the vertebrae. And then we pull those front ribs back to make sure that we're not being overly effortful here trying to soften through the belly. So we find this tall, alert skeletal body, and then we soften and release effort all through the muscular body. Closing eyes will help you go inward to really go deeper into self-awareness. But of course, you're always welcome just to keep a gentle gaze on the floor in front of you. A singing bowl is just an auditory cue. It's a way that we create tradition or predictability in our yoga practice, and it gives us this signal to go into meditation and to come out of Shavasana at the end of class. So the sound of our singing bowl is our cue to go into our first intentional deep breath. Breathing in from nose to belly. Breathing out through the mouth completely, <sighs> emptying the lungs. Inhale from nose to belly, pause with the breath in, and exhale, release completely. <sighs> Making sure to not hold any stagnant air into the lower lungs. And beginning to slow the breath choosing to breathe only through the nose, slowing the speed of the air coming in, feeling the belly rise, and then slowing even more the breath coming out, feeling the belly fall back. And coming to the body, you might wanna stretch the jaw even offering yourself a little self-massage to just release any tension through the forehead, the temples, down the jawline. Taking that moment just to make sure you're not holding 
Letting go completely. As you scan through the body, just be curious about whatever it is you observe. Allow yourself a few moments to disengage from the outer world and drop in to your inner experience. Allow your outer seeing to become insight. Your outer listening to become deep inner listening. Just notice the present moment without judgment. Bring awareness to all the sensations in the moment, the touch points in the body where gravity is holding you securely to the supports beneath you. The feeling of clothing and air touching the skin. Aware of temperature, where you might feel warm or cool. Notice with a gentle attention any discomfort in the body or areas that feel very relaxed and comfortable. Be curious about the overall energy in the body. Any sense of tension versus relaxation. Just notice without getting caught up in whatever you observe. Bringing awareness to the breath, it can help us to bring one hand to the belly, one hand to the heart, and then hug the elbows to the outer ribs. And this is called a yogic three-part breath in which we become aware of the torso's wave-like motion tied to each breath. As we inhale, we feel the lungs from the bottom to the top, belly, ribs, chest expand. And we exhale, releasing from the top to the bottom, chest, ribs, and belly relax. Finding that little pause before the inhale, and a gentle pause before each exhale. Just feeling the subtle movement of the whole torso with each breath. Choosing to slow the breath down, to breathe low into the lungs. And you're welcome to hold hands to the body, but if you prefer your hands down to your legs, by all means, this is your practice. Bring awareness to your mind. Just noticing thoughts that come and go. Having the mind wander off in thought is not a mistake. It is not a failure. It is simply the way the mind functions. And as we practice noticing thoughts that arise, from awareness we realize we have a choice. We are able to shift perspective at every moment we find awareness. And bring awareness to your emotional energy. Just contemplating, how do I really feel in this moment? Or perhaps curious about what waves of emotion have been present for you recently. Offering a tender loving kindness to your truest self. Soothing any emotional tension through deepening and slowing the breath, relaxing tension from the body, Perhaps a gentle smile to the face, loving energy into the eyes. And allowing yourself to anchor awareness in the present moment.
just this. In stillness and quiet, the mind wanders. Sometimes the body feels restless. And our intention is to just notice and attempt to come back to stillness and back to quiet again and again. And if your hands are still to the heart and the belly, release hands to your legs, palms turned up. Once more, roll the shoulders back, really open through the heart center, lifting the chin, gently lifting the heart, completely open to receive the present moment. No need to tense up, no need to run away. Allowing yourself to be present with all that is. Following the breath. Aware of the whole body. On your next inhale, allow hands to rise slowly to the heart center. Fingertips and palms touching and prayer hands. Thumbs to the heart and Anjali Mudra. Gentle smile to the face as you just savor this moment. Grateful to be well enough to be here today. Grateful for life itself. In Anjali Mudra, we set intention, taking aim to direct our lives towards becoming our best selves. Imagine for a moment what positive change you would like to see in your mind-body system. Can you see yourself with greater self-awareness? Better overall health? Increased happiness? Or feeling more in control of your stress response to life? Visualize these changes taking place, slowly evolving and growing through the practice of awareness. Really imagine what it would look like and feel like to make this positive intention a reality. Deep breath in, complete breath out. <sighs> Gently opening the eyes, allow the hands to float down to the legs. Pause here, shifting from inner awareness to taking back in the outer world to see the space around you, the colors, the light. More aware of the environment that surrounds you in this moment. And then from here, notice which leg you have in front because we're gonna come back to our Sukhasana pose with the other leg in front. So we'll go ahead and extend the legs out for a moment, giving the knees a nice break here. So I like to massage my kneecaps a little bit and just get some nice circulation flowing up and down my legs, little massage. And then from here, sitting up nice and tall, go ahead and point your toes low, stretching all through the top of the feet, ankles and shins. And then pressing through the heels away from you, draw the toes in toward you. 
work to spread the toes wide, creating as much space between the bones of the feet as possible. Really lift through the heart, little 90 degree effort into that hip crease, feeling the whole back plane of the legs slowly stretch and engage. So one of these long-term benefits from yoga practice is keeping the feet very flexible, and that allows us to walk with more stability and prevent falls and injuries as we get older. Rolling the ankles a few times each way, releasing any tension from the ankles. I also say as a therapist, you know, to get out of the head, out of that thinking mind, come into the feet. So foot awareness kind of gets you away from the automatic thinking brain. Okay, a few circles there. And then go ahead and recross the legs, bringing the leg that was in front in first, followed by that second leg. Once more, you might want to find those sitting bones. Hands come to the knees. Inhale, pull the hands in energetically as you squeeze the shoulders back, lift the heart and the chin. And then exhale, push the hands away, pull the belly in and drop the chin to the chest. And then sitting upright, keeping that head heavy to the midline, begin to roll the head side to side. Just trying to notice any tension you might be holding through the neck and shoulders. Trying to gently release that tension. Just rolling side to side, chin to chest, ear toward the shoulder. Little smile to the face as you enjoy just noticing and softening through this part of the body where we tend to hold a lot of our emotional stress. And then when you're fairly even side to side, chin to the chest. And the next inhale, roll the head back up. And then from here, go ahead and bring the knees together. Feet are going to come all the way out. Setting your feet actively as if you could push them into a wall. Lift your heart and then begin to hinge from the hip crease. Begin to roll yourself forward. We're trying to tilt the pelvis forward a little bit. From that point of stretch, we soften, allowing the shoulders to round, the chin to tuck down. And we can release the arms, resting to the back of the hands. And then soften the feet and legs. Coming into a resting forward fold. All of our forward bends allow us to practice inner awareness. In these positions, we notice how the mind is thinking. We tend to notice our emotional experience. And we can even deepen the breath and really follow the breath here with more ease. Breathing low from nose to belly. Feeling that expansion through the belly with each inhale. Little contraction with each exhale. And then fingertips come in towards you. On an inhale, roll the spine up. Sitting up nice and tall, step the right foot in. So we're gonna do our Marichyasana twist. You can either keep the right foot to the inner left knee or step across to the outer knee, your choice. Inhale, extend that left arm, reach the crown of the head, and exhale, begin to twist to the right. Hand or elbow will wrap the knee. Your right hand comes behind the hip. Press through that right hand to lengthen through the spine. Inhale, pull the belly in. Exhale, begin to twist over to the right. So in these twisting poses, we're trying to create a nice sensation into the belly, really breathing low in the lungs, feel the diaphragm expand the belly and push the belly into that right thigh. Keep the left foot active, reaching out through that left foot. And we keep the neck comfortable in every twist, only turning the head gently. And then inhale, hand to the knee, lengthen through the crown of the head, and exhale, unwind, coming forward. Extend the right leg out and step the left foot in. Again, to the inner knee or across to that outer right knee. Inhale, extend the right arm, lengthen through the crown of the head. We always want a very tall spine before we twist. Exhale, begin to twist over to the left. Hand or elbow will wrap that left knee. Left hand behind your hip. Inhale, lengthen upright. Exhale, pull the knee in as you twist to the left. Keep that right foot active. Breathe low, feeling that belly compress into the thigh. So all of the twisting poses we do in yoga, all of the belly work, even lying on our mat on our belly, is really healing to the body. It helps to create good circulation through all of our organs, our digestive system, and it allows our immune system and our endocrine system to be in optimal function. Breathing low, massaging the belly, 
by breathing with the diaphragm. Again, we are helping to nourish that enteric nervous system, the nervous system made up of all of our digestive organs and our microbiome. Inhale, lengthen, hand to the knee, exhale, unwind very gently and slowly. And then drop that left knee all the way out and bring the right foot in to meet the left into our bound angle pose, Baddha Konasana. Here our intention is to find symmetry in the arches. If you're sitting on a blanket, you might enjoy this pose a little bit more if you come forward off of your support. Just feels kind of good to have a strong grounding um, connection through the body. Holding onto the knees, inhale, lift the heart, lift the chin, squeeze the shoulders back. And then on exhale, begin to hinge from the top of the hips, bringing the hands forward, tuck the chin down, always protecting the neck. And then as you find that edge, starting to lower yourself down with ease, a little rounding to the upper back, perhaps again turning to release the arms, resting them to the back of the hands. Energetically press the feet into each other, reaching the knees out. And notice the sensation into the hip joints here. So our bound angle pose has two benefits. It's our resting forward bend, where we increase awareness, calming the mind. But also it's a nice gentle hip opener. And in yoga philosophy, the belief is that we hold our emotional stress, we hold emotional wounds deep into the hips. So in every class, we'll make sure that we have some nice hip releasing work. Deep in the breath, feel the belly expand with each inhale. Relax back with each exhale and slow the breath down. And then bringing your fingertips to the mat, inhale and roll yourself back up. Holding to the inner knees, step the legs out one at a time into our wide angle position. And as you find good connection through the sitting bones, try to rock the pelvis forward somewhat. And we want our toes to face straight up to the sky. And it can feel good to kind of internally rotate and externally rotate. It's kind of exploring that motion through the, the leg bone connecting into the hip socket. And then find the point where your toes are facing straight up. Inhale, lift your heart. Hinge from the hips and exhale, come forward however far. Feeling sensation now through the inner thighs, the back of the legs. Again, tuck the chin, close the eyes. Going inward, new sensations in each pose. New things in the body to pay attention to, to be aware of. And you might feel that once you've held this stretch for a moment, you can come down a little deeper, a little lower into this forward bend. Feel the belly move with each breath. Soften the jaw. Little smile to the face. And from here, go ahead and walk the hands over to that right ankle. Coming into a little side stretch, if you can, bring your left hand across that right leg, being able to stretch into that left side body. Trying to keep the feet vertical here, so not having the toes curl in. Inhale back to center, lengthen yourself out. Inhale and exhale, hands walk to that left ankle. Taking a moment here, perhaps bringing that right hand all the way across to grab onto the outer side of the lower left leg. And breathing here, feeling stretch into those right side ribs. And inhale, walk the hands back to center. Exhale, come deeper into your forward fold just for a moment. Pausing for a breath, bringing full awareness. And then bringing the hands in towards you, inhale and roll the spine up. From here, go ahead and cross the legs at mid-shin, coming onto your hands and knees, feet together, knees wide apart. And as you sit back onto the heels, 
Begin to hinge from that hip crease and slide yourself out into your first child's pose. So a nice big stretch here, almost like we're in down dog at first. Really press the hands down and forward with hands shoulder width apart, fingers spread wide. Reach the hips back, stretching through the back body. And then from here, coming onto fingertips, inhale and exhale, walk your hands over to the right side. We're going to press the left fingertips down and forward as we reach the left hip back, breathing deeply into the left side body, trying to use the breath to create space between the ribs. So again, we're trying to create more space for our range of breath. So the slower we breathe, the longer we live. Balancing the nervous system. A slower breath leads to a calmer nervous system. A quieter, sympathetic nervous system. And then inhale, walk hands to center. And then exhale, hands over to the left. This time the right hand pressing down and forward. The right hip reaching back. And really breathing deeply to use that breath to stretch through the side body. If it's ever uncomfortable to your neck to keep the head hovering here, you're always welcome to rest the forehead onto the forearm of that left arm. And then inhale, bring those hands back to center. And then just release here in child's pose. You might want to come all the way forehead to the mat. You can also stack your hands, a little pillow under the forehead. And you might want to turn the palms up here or even rock the hip side to side. It's really releasing all effort, finding relaxation here in a gentle child's pose. Self-awareness stands as the most basic and fundamental psychological benefit that yoga can bring an individual. Once you have attained self-awareness, Everything else shall follow. Teresa Ann. From child's pose here, reach the hands forward actively. Inhale the table. Tuck your knees in so they align with the hips and the ankles. Toes are pointing straight back. Hands are shoulder width apart. Inhale, lift your tailbone, lift your heart gently. Start small and, and minimal with these spinal movements at first. Exhale, drop the tailbone, pull the belly in, release the crown of the head. Inhale, tailbone leads the extension of the spine, lifting the heart last. Exhale, really pull the belly in, compression through the belly. And inhale, extension, pause with the breath in. And exhale, flexion. Pause with the breath out. Continue this cat-cow motion at your own breath pace. Going a little deeper into the stretch as the spine feels warmed up. So cat-cow is one of our best practices to get good circulation flowing through the whole body. Another saying in yoga is you are as young as your spine is flexible with the acknowledgement that as we age, we stiffen, we lose mobility through the spine, trying to nourish our discs, our blood flow, keeping the spine healthy. And one more big inhale. This time when you exhale, pull the belly in, curl the toes under, and then on your next inhale, reach the hips up and back to down dog. Start here with bent knees. You can even kind of walk the knees, you know, straighten the legs one at a time, swaying the hips, very fluid here. Or you might just want to straighten one knee at a time and press that heel to the mat and hold for a breath. And then the next breath, bend that first leg, straighten the second. So moving freely in down dog, just trying to gently begin to warm up through the back of the legs. And of course, benefiting here through inversion, blood flow coming to the brain. So as you pedal out the leg side to side, we'll come now into full down dog. Bend both the knees, re-lengthen the spine, hips up and back, and then begin to straighten both knees as heels descend. Really broaden through the shoulders and upper arm bones. Relax the neck, gazing towards the toes. Aware of the breath. 
anchoring the hand at the base of the pointer finger, inner thighs reaching back behind you. So inversions help to nourish the actual physical brain. As we invert the head below the heart, we get blood flow coming more toward the brain, bringing with it glucose and oxygen, building blocks for our neurotransmitters. Great job here in this long hold. Inhale and exhale, knees come down and sink the hips all the way back to child's, releasing the toes, coming here into a resting pose. Using child's pose as a way to bring full awareness to the moment. One of our most self-soothing postures. All we need to do is pay attention. We don't have to decide if something is good or bad, right or wrong. We don't need to have judgments about what kind of person we are because we have certain kinds of thoughts or feelings or reactions. That is the road to suffering. Our job is quite different, just to notice. What is actually happening right now? We notice this thing, then that. We pay attention to all of it. In pure awareness, there is no suffering. Sherry Huber from the book, Suffering is Optional. All we have to do is pay attention. From here, reach hands forward actively, setting up for down dog once more. So hands shoulder width apart. Inhale to table, curl the toes under, and exhale up and back to down dog, coming into our full pose with knees straight, pausing for a breath, broadening through the shoulders. Deep breath in, looking forward. Exhale, step or hop feet to the hands. Inhale, extend the spine, pull the belly in, and then exhale, fold, coming into Uttanasana, our standing forward bend. Pausing here, allowing anything to release from the back body. You might like to sway a little bit, or you might enjoy grabbing onto the elbows, a little traction to your low back. Crown of the head directing towards the earth. Releasing all effort here. It's fine to have a gentle bend in the knees. Find comfort here. The psychological benefit being the inversion, more so than the stretch here. And then from here, bend the knees, release the arms. On a slow inhale, drop the tailbone down and begin to unfurl, rolling the spine upward. Coming all the way to mountain pose. <sighs> Exhaling into dasana. Take a moment here to feel totally aware of the body. Feel the feet broad and grounding down into the earth. You might even want to press one foot and then the other into the mat. Really feeling sensation through the soles of the feet. Roll the shoulders back, palms turned forward, open through the heart center. Draw the shoulders back, aligning shoulders over the hips, hips over the ankles. Pull the front ribs back a little bit to release any strain through the front of the body. And then allow yourself to enjoy the energy of a gentle smile, savoring the breath feeling the belly rise and fall with each breath. Quieting the mind, holding awareness to the present moment without the mind jumping in with judgment or analyzing. Just pure awareness. And on an inhale, coming back to the outer world. Again, in each transition, we try to use that transition, that change in sensation to practice inner awareness, to really become more in tune with noticing everything in the body, the breath, noticing our senses and the world around us. 
Okay, we're going to do our active flow now. And so we're going to want to be facing the long edge of our mat today. So if you're at home, you might want to turn your mat to the long edge facing your computer screen. All right, so starting in mountain pose, anchor a pinky toe, stretch the toes out from there. And as you spread the toes wide apart, draw the heels back away from the toes. Typically, we want just a few inches between the big toes. You can find those bony frontal hips. We want those to be centered right over the feet. Roll the shoulders back. Hands come to prayer position. This is a little active breath I made up called a heart-shaped breath. We're going to inhale, prayer hands float up. Open the palms, tracing a heart shape. And as you reach that point of the heart, bend your elbows, drawing the shoulders down, open the heart center, and continue to exhale, hands touch. Inhale, prayer hands rise, open. Draw the elbows and shoulders down, chin to chest, hands touch. One more time, inhale, prayer hands rise. Opening the heart. Exhale, elbows come down, release shoulders down the back and fingertips to the midpoint. And then from here, inhale, hands to prayer. Exhale, turn the fingertips to face in. On your next inhale, step or hop the feet out, coming into a wide stance. We're coming into five pointed star, so we want the toes to be turned out just on a slight angle. Turn the palms up. Inhale, reach through the arms. Exhale, bend the knees and the hips. Elbows down and back, pinkies back, elbows at shoulder height, pelvic floor in and up. Inhale, rise, straighten the legs. Exhale, squat into our goddess pose or victory pose. And one more time, inhale, lift. And exhale, lower those hips, come a little deeper this time. You might even want to press the thumb into the fingernail of the pointer finger, a little hand mudra. Creates an energetic line through the heart meridian. Pelvic floor in and up strongly here in this wide squat. Great job. Inhale, lift. Turn the palms out. Exhale, hands come to the hips. Inhale, slide your hands down to the knees. Take a breath out. Inhale. And exhale, horse pose. We're going to press the right shoulder across toward, or the left shoulder toward the right knee. Inhale, center. Exhale, press the right shoulder across, really stretching through the side body. Inhale, center. One more time, each side. Left shoulder press. Inhale, center. And right shoulder press. Inhale, coming back to center. Straighten the legs. From here, we're going to turn the left toes in and the right toes all the way out so that your right foot is parallel with that long edge of your mat. We're setting up for warrior two, so you want a long enough stance so that when you lunge, your right knee is gonna fall directly over the ankle. As you find your strong stance, hands in prayer. Torso stays vertical the whole time in warrior two. Turn to face over the right shoulder. Inhale and exhale, lunge the right knee as arms fly out. Virabhadrasana two, visual point of focus, mental focus. Turn the right palm up, inhale, straighten the right knee, deep breath in to stretch through that right side body, and exhale right back to warrior two, torso vertical, pelvis engaged, pelvic floor engaged. Pausing with awareness. Right palm up, inhale, straighten that front knee into reverse triangle, big side body stretch. Next, inhale, bring arms to a T. Exhale here, setting up for trikonasana. And then inhale, begin to reach it out through the right hand. We say nice and long through those right side ribs. Exhale, release that right hand either above or below the knee. Roll the left shoulder blade open. And then begin to hinge from that top of the right hip crease. Press the right sitting bone forward. Lift through the inner thigh. And you can stay right here with hand of the hip, or you can inhale and extend that left arm up above you. Working to stack the shoulders here in Trikonasana. Breathing. Finding steadiness. 
Inhale, bring that left arm all the way over the ear, stretching through that side body. Exhale, begin to pivot on the feet, coming into a high lunge. Just gonna pause here for a moment. Come into a really deep lunge here. We're onto those back left toes. I want you to feel compression, that right thigh and belly pressing into each other. Breathe low in the lungs. Next, inhale, begin to walk your hands over to the center point, pivoting on the toes so the feet are parallel, setting up for our wide angle, standing forward bend. Pressing through the hands, heart and head lifted, inhale, and exhale, hinging from that hip crease, begin to fold. You can turn the palms up, or you can even bring the hands back in line with the legs. Crown of the head towards the earth. And just how we did in our sitting wide leg fold, we're gonna walk our hands over to the left ankle. Little side to side stretch here in our wide leg stance. Grabbing onto that left ankle, stretching through the right side body. Inhale to center. And exhale, hands to that right ankle now. Trying to keep the inner edges of the feet pressing down. So we're trying not to collapse the ankle, but really press actively through both edges of the feet. And then inhale, coming back to center. Coming all the way into your forward bend. Inhale, press halfway up. Exhale, hands to the hips. On an inhale, press through your feet, come up with strength, and exhale, step or hop the feet in. Inhale, release the hands, pausing in mountain pose, full awareness from the soles of the feet to the crown of the head. And then inhale, hands in prayer, continue to rise up, open the hands, exhale, elbows and shoulders come down, stretching the heart, chin to chest, fingertips touch. Inhale, hands to prayer, rise. Smile to the face as the heart opens, exhale, elbows down, chin to chest. One more time, inhale, reach it up. Exhale, elbows to the side ribs, tuck the chin down. And then from here, inhale, hands to the heart. Exhale, fingertips face each other. Next breath in, step or hop the feet wide. Again here, we're gonna turn the toes out on a slight angle, palms up. Inhale, reach. Exhale, lunging down, squatting into our goddess pose, pelvic floor engaged. Inhale, reach. Exhale, squat, hold some engagement here. Feel the energy to the quads without the mind judging that as negative. And inhale up. Last time, exhale. Really come lower here, sink the hips down, press the elbows back. Again, perhaps anchoring the thumb to the pointer finger. Breathing into the sensation, face relaxed. Mind steady, <laughs> nice job, inhale, reach. Turn the palms out, hands to the hips. Inhale, and exhale, slide the hands down to the knees. Inhale, exhale, press your right shoulder across to the left side. Inhale, center, left shoulder press. Inhale, center, right shoulder, horse pose. Inhale, center, and left shoulder. Inhale to center, coming to standing. With hands to your hips, you're gonna turn the right toes in on an angle and your left toes all the way out, that left foot parallel with the long edge of your mat. Find that lunge distance so that your knee will fall right over the ankle when we lunge into warrior two. Straighten the knee, hands to the heart. Turn to gaze over the left shoulder. Inhale. And exhale, lunge and fly the arms open into Virabhadrasana two. Turn the left palm up. Inhale up and over, straighten that left knee. Deep breath into the left side body. Exhale right back to warrior two. Lock it in. Pelvic floor in and up. Left palm up. Inhale, reverse triangle. 
Big stretch. Exhale right back to warrior two. Pausing here for a few breaths. Tuck the left sitting bone forward. Press the left knee back towards the pinky toe side of your foot. Torso vertical, pelvis drawing in and up. Visual focus, mental focus. And as you start to feel more sensation into the muscles, keeping the mind steady. Great job, everybody. Inhale and exhale. We're going to come into our, our reverse triangle. A deep breath in. Exhale, arms in a T. Then inhale, reach out for triangle pose. Really reach to the left. As you find that maximum stretch, right hand of the hip, left hand above or below the knee. Tuck the left sitting bone forward, lift through the inner thigh, roll the right shoulder open. Hinge from the top of that left, left hip crease, keeping those left side body nice and long. Staying either hand to the hip or reaching that right arm all the way above you. Working to stack the shoulders. Trikonasana. Inhale and exhale, bring the right arm over the ear. Side body stretch. Continue to pivot onto those back toes, bringing hands to the mat into our high crescent lunge. So we're high on those back toes, lunging deeply, feeling some compression between the left side of the abdomen and that left thigh. Pausing for a breath. Inhale, begin to walk your hands over to the center, adjusting your feet to be parallel. Keeping yourself halfway upright. Inhale, bring your hands to interlock at the low back. Roll the shoulders back. Next breath in. And then exhale, begin to fold from the hips, lifting the hands up away from the sacrum, releasing the crown of the head, squeezing the shoulder blades together here into a nice deep stretch through the neck and shoulder region. Press the thighs back away from you. Lift through the sitting bones, deep in the fold. Inhale, coming halfway up. Release the hands all the way down to the mat. Pausing here. You might just want to sway a little bit, just sweeping the hands across the mat, just to release a little bit of tension. Working the pose to whatever feels good to your body. And then inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, bring hands to the hips. On your next inhale, rise up, press through the feet. Exhale, step or hop the feet in. Release the arms, inhale, big breath. Fingertips touch and exhale, drawing prayer hands down the midline, coming all the way to the heart. Pausing here. Noticing the heart beating, the lungs breathing, energy throughout the body. As you release hands to your sides, you might notice tingles into the fingertips. Or you might begin to feel the effort of the body slowing down, cooling off. Little smile to the face as you pause in full awareness. Just this. And on an inhale, coming back out. Okay, so another very therapeutic benefit of yoga is when we do our balancing practice. So when we practice balance, it requires strong mental awareness, full attention to the present moment. And so it's really a great way to condition ourselves to notice when we get distracted, because typically when we start to stumble or lose our balance, it's because the mind has wandered. So today we're gonna to do a dancer's pose, which is not only a challenging balancing practice, but it also is a heart opening practice. We're kind of extending and opening through the heart center of the body. I do always recommend you offer yourself the support of a wall if you'd feel more secure knowing the wall is there to kind of help you find steadiness. So we're going to balance into our left leg first, which would mean you'd want your left shoulder towards the wall. Okay, so standing here in mountain pose. Broaden through those left toes, nice, nice broad sole of the left foot. Come onto the right toes. 
Roll the shoulders back, palms turned forward, visual focus. From here, inhale, and then begin to lift the right foot up, grabbing onto the front of the right ankle. You're welcome to stay right here, just drawing that right heel towards the outer thigh. Otherwise, in dancer's pose, you begin to flow forward, reaching the torso forward, extending that left arm out, and reaching that right leg up behind us, trying to lift the foot high, balancing, knowing you're breathing, visual focus, mental focus. Nice inhale, Woo, and come on up, <laughs> and release. I'm on carpet here teaching in my basement, and it does make for a harder balancing experience. <laughs> Certainly on a hard surface, we find a lot more steadiness, so good extra challenge for me. <laughs> okay, second side, if you're relying on a wall for some um, support, then turning your right shoulder to face the wall. Roll the shoulders back. Spread the right toes really broadly, heel away from the toes, come on to that left toes, so we're weighing completely into the right leg visual point of focus. Roll the shoulders back. Inhale and exhale. Lift the left foot up, grabbing onto the front of the left ankle. You can stay right here, balancing and just stretching that left quad. Or else we're going to inhale, begin to reach the torso forward, reach out through the right arm, begin to lift that left foot high, open through the heart center here. Breathing, rooting down through the right foot. Nice work on an inhale, coming all the way up, stepping it down. <laughs> all right, so a little bit of balancing work for the day. I'd encourage you just to do balance here and there, you know, as you're brushing your teeth, you can just pick up one foot at a time. Um, if you're finding yourself waiting in a line at the grocery store, you can do a little bit of balance work there as well. So it's just a fun thing to remind ourselves just to chip away at and keep trying to get better at. Okay, we're going to wind it down for some cool, cool down stretches before our Shavasana. So if you'd like to have some props handy to get yourself nice and comfortable during relaxation, by all means, maybe a couple blankets, a couple pillows. Otherwise, we're going to stand here in a wide Tadasana, feet wide, toes slightly turned out. Roll the shoulders back, palms forward. Lift the heart, lift the chin. Little smile to the face, savoring the breath. And then inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, chin to the chest, head heavy in the midline, allowing the back of the neck to release completely. Inhale, and then exhale, begin to bend the knees, drop the tailbone down. Arms are gonna roll, shoulders roll forward, arms dangle. And just as we unfurled coming up to Tadasana, we're gonna roll ourselves down into Uttanasana. Bit by bit, notch by notch, slowly coming forward. Pausing here in our forward bend, one last inversion. Inhale, look forward. Turn the toes out and exhale, drop your hips down into Malasana or yoga squat. You can always squat with the elbows to the knees, hips lifted. Or if you come lower with the hips, you may need to come onto the toes. And if so, just work on anchoring one foot at a time, eventually moving towards having both feet directly onto the mat. Toes are turned out only slightly to align the angle of the knees with the ankles. Elbows come to the inner knees, hands in prayer, drawing the pelvic floor in and up strongly. So another long-term health benefit of yoga through squatting is we help to maintain the strength of the pelvic floor, preventing things like prolapses and um, struggles with our bladder control. So very beneficial to strengthen those pelvic floor muscles. Breathe into the hips here as you squeeze the elbows and knees together. Softening the jaw, relaxing through the face. Keep the heart lifted, keep lifting out of the shoulders. Nice long back body. Nice work everybody. Inhale, 
And coming onto the toes, fingertips to the mat, just to allow you to sit back with control. And coming to sitting here, go ahead and extend the legs out in front of you into Dandasana. Press those feet forward, find good connection through the sitting bones, lift the heart, and exhale, begin to hinge from the top of the hips, releasing yourself into a forward bend, tuck the chin down, palms turned up, releasing here any effort, feet and legs are relaxed, you can even have a gentle bend to the knees, palms turned up, chin tucked, Eyes closed, resting forward fold. Breathe low from nose to belly. Feel the belly push into the thigh with each inhale. Soften with each exhale. Fingertips in towards you, inhale, roll the spine up. And then bringing the soles of the feet together in bound angle pose once more. Symmetry in the arches, inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, hinge from the hips. Coming into a gentle forward bend and then tucking the chin, relaxing all through the body here. Deepening the breath. Feeling space and relaxation deep into the hip joints with each breath. And then fingertips will come in on an inhale, roll yourself up, draw the knees together. Inhale, lift your heart nice and strong through the torso, strong through the back body. Release the arms, inhale. And on a slow exhale, begin to roll it back one notch at a time, really slowing it down as it starts to feel challenging, resisting gravity. Awareness the whole way down onto the back. Core work and releasing, squaring the hips, squaring the shoulders, keeping the knees bent, feet to the floor. <clears throat> Inhale, pick the right foot up, bring the outer edge of the right foot to the left thigh. Inhale and exhale, lift the left foot off the mat, weave the hands behind the left thigh and begin to draw the left leg in towards you as you press the right knee away. Keep the right ankle energized, drawing those right toenails towards your shin. Soften the jaw, relax all through the face. Gentle smile as you breathe nose to belly. Feeling tension release from that right hip with each breath out. And then on an inhale, step the left foot down. Continue to cross the right thigh high over the left like you're sitting cross-legged in a chair. And then drop your knees to the left. Lift your left shoulder blade up and scoot it out to the left side to help your right shoulder be firmly to the mat. And then arms can be just out from your sides as you turn your head to the, to the right side away from the knees. Feeling a nice low back twist into that right low back. Bit of a stretch into the outer right hip. Breathe low, feel the belly expand with inhale. Soften with exhale. And then inhale, head to center. Lead through that right leg. Left leg follows. Square the hips and shoulders. Inhale, pick the right or the left foot up off the mat and just cross that outer edge of the left foot onto the right thigh. Inhale. And exhale, lift the, left, the right leg up, weave the hands behind the right thigh. Begin to draw the right knee in towards you, press the left knee away. Again, that left ankle is engaged. Breathing into that left hip joint, softening tension with each exhale. Maybe going just a little bit deeper. Creating a little bit more sensation as the body feels safe here in this pose.
And then inhale, step the right foot down, cross the left thigh high over the right, drop the knees off to the right side, and then lift up your right shoulder, scoot it out to the right side so your left shoulder can find the mat, and then turning your head to the left away from the knees. Palms turned up, letting go of all effort here. Breathe low, using the breath to stretch the abdomen. Deepening the twist with each inhale. Soften with each exhale. Inhale, head to center. Lead through your left leg. Right leg follows. Set the feet down, square the hips. Deep breath in and exhale, hug the knees into the chest. Nice big squeeze here. Press the breath out completely. You can always rock a little bit on the back body, using gravity to create a little bit of massage. And then dropping elbows to the mat, hands rest to the outer thighs. On an inhale, straighten both legs, feet to the sky. And here you can just point the toes, flex through the heels, maybe roll the ankles once or twice. It's fine to keep a nice gentle bend into the knees. So this leg inversion, where now our legs are above the heart, another very therapeutic posture in yoga. As our blood flow shifts, it gives a little rest to our circulatory system. Rather than the heart having to pull blood up the body, we're kind of giving the heart a little rest here. It's believed that when we invert the legs, we help to bring on the relaxation response, triggering some activity into the parasympathetic nervous system. So we just pause for a moment, allowing some of that physiological shift to take place, helping us to benefit more from our Shavasana relaxation practice. Inhale, and exhale, hug the knees into the chest once more, nice big squeeze. Pausing here, nice compression into the belly mechanically stimulating that vagus nerve. So as we press into the belly, as we breathe with the diaphragm, we're helping to stimulate the vagus nerve, helping to create more relaxation or reassurance to the nervous system. In this moment, all is well. Similar effect of getting a nice hug from somebody we love. And inhale, step the feet down. Prepping yourself for Shavasana however you wish. Begin to extend the legs out. I would definitely recommend a small pillow under the head just to support the neck just for optimal comfort. Perhaps a blanket or um, pillow under the knees just to create some ease here in the body. And wherever you find yourself, do walk the shoulder blades in towards each other. Turn the palms up. Nice and open through the heart center of the body. You might like to find a version of an eye pillow. If you wanna fold a little washcloth or hand towel to place over the eyes, that can be a little extra relaxation experience. Helping to quiet the occipital lobe in the brain, the vision center. So finding yourself into a nice comfortable position I'm gonna encourage you here to do just a little bit of tensing and relaxing. So sometimes it's hard to let go in the body. We're just holding this inner tension. And so sometimes we have to tense to fatigue the muscles so that we can release and really let go, really soften through the body. So for a moment, I'd encourage you to actually squeeze your feet together, squeeze your knees together. Really activate the legs, hold some energy, take a deep breath in, and exhale. Let the legs fall, let the feet just splay out away from each other. And then from here, I'd encourage you to make fists in the hands, 
Engage the biceps, even lift the arms off the mat, just an inch or two, hold, full tension, full engagement, deep breath in, and exhale, release, opening the hands, arms heavy to the mat. And then engage the torso, lifting the shoulders off the mat, squeezing the abdominal muscles, squeezing the shoulders, hold for a moment, even tense through the face, deep breath in, and exhale, dropping heavily to the mat, surrendering to gravity, letting go of all effort. You might want to stretch the jaw, just encouraging the jaw to let go of effort. The tongue falls back heavy, relaxed. The eyes fall back heavy and relaxed. And deep in the breath, feel that motion from the breath moving the belly, the ribs, and the chest. And exhale, softening the chest, the ribs, the belly. Slow the breath down. Finding that pause at the top of the inhale. And a pause at the bottom of the exhale. Gentle smile to the face. Loving energy into the eyes. Breathing directly into the heart center of the body, open to receive the nourishment of each breath. Healing energy flowing in with each inhale, tension releasing with each exhale. When we can physically relax the body, it helps to relax the nervous system. When the body is at ease, the nervous system assumes all is well, that we are safe. Feel the body heavy, strongly connected to the earth. Aware of all the touch points where gravity is holding you securely to the mat. Scan through the body, allowing tension to melt away. Beautiful energy flowing in. Tension flowing out and away from you. Aware of the breath. Aware of the full body. And the mind might wander into thought. And as you notice, you become distracted in thinking. Just come back to the breath, back to whole body awareness again and again. Breathing in, I calm my whole body. Breathing out, I smile, dwelling in the present moment. I know this is a wonderful moment. Breathing in, breathing out. Gentle smile to the face. Beautiful energy flowing into the heart center with each breath.
Breathing in, breathing out. Just this. Aware of the present moment, wonderful moment. Letting go with each breath out, sinking into stillness. Relaxing more and more with each exhale. Begin to deepen the breath. Feel the breath drawing in, revitalizing energy. A beautiful healing light coming into the heart center with each inhale flowing out to the whole body with each exhale. Deepening the breath, begin to feel energy returning to the body, bringing curiosity to the sensation of movement wiggling fingers and toes ever so patiently. A little smile to the face as you feel grateful for the freedom of movement. Squeeze and open the hands and the feet. Roll the wrists, roll the ankles. Range of motion, one of our health benefits from yoga. And then moving freely, but it might feel nice here to reach the arms up high, point the toes low. You might like to hold each wrist and pull up and over, stretching the side body. Or you might like to interlock the fingers and flip the palms away from the crown of the head, stretching through the hands. We often hold tension and stress into the hands, are restless. So stretching the hands, very beneficial to calming our stress. And you might enjoy one last twist here, or you might just wanna hug the knees into the chest, give yourself one more nice big squeeze, little rocking side to side on the back body. You might like to lift the feet up into a happy baby pose into one more hip opening stretch. Just exploring movement freely savoring sensation in the body. And then eventually coming to roll to your right side. And as we pause in right side lying position, it creates opportunity for awareness in the body, new touch points, new grounding to the mat with gravity, 
the breath flowing in through the left nostril, out through the right, in a calming circular breath. Feeling blood flow shift as we shift position in the body. And then using your left hand for support, begin to press yourself up, roll the torso up, let the head come up very last. And holding inner awareness, find a comfortable sitting position. Again, we set the foundation of the body first through our leg position and connection through the sitting bones. From there, we level the pelvis and rise upward through the spine. Softening the shoulders, softening the frontal ribs back. And with hands to the legs, I offer the choice to turn the palms up here. These open hands always symbolizing a receiving and soaking in of the benefits of our practice. And a gentle smile to the face. Just grateful that you can do this practice and also that you chose to take this time for self-care. A little pride in making your self-care a priority. Something proactive to move you toward optimal wellness toward resilience. Ram Das says, mindfulness gives you a deeper appreciation of life. It brings you honesty with yourself. It is a way of listening more deeply exactly how it is. Mindful awareness will help you quiet your mind enhance your ability to be insightful and understanding and bring you a sense of inner peace. All we have to do is pay attention. Releasing hands to your sides on a slow breath, begin to allow the arms to float upright gathering energy, smile to the face as fingertips touch. And a slow exhale as prayer hands float down the midline, coming to rest at the heart. Pausing here to come back to our intention. What positive change would you like to create in your mind-body system? Take aim and visualize. What would it look like and feel like to live in optimal wellness? To understand where your power lies through pausing, noticing, and from awareness, able to choose your response, becoming empowered to direct your life. Just see this becoming more and more instinctive the way that you walk your life path. Aware of your breath, choosing to slow and deepen the breath. Aware of your body, choosing to soften tension, to lift your heart, to smile. Aware of thoughts in the mind, unable to bring your intention, your mindset back to thoughts that serve you well. And of course, knowing where habits are not serving you well and choosing different behavior. See yourself able to pay attention and from awareness, kindly redirecting yourself towards a happier and healthier life. Deep breath in, big breath out. Release on exhale, big deep breath. Exhale with a sigh. And one more time, big smile on inhale. And exhale, letting go. It's always a pleasure to practice with others. Thank you for joining me today at Livestream Mind Balance Yoga. Namaste.
And feeling your namaste is coming through the airwaves toward me. Such a pleasure to be with you all today. Let me just approach the camera to sign off. So glad you all could be at Mind Balance Yoga today. I hope this practice gave you kind of a big picture view of what our intention is coming onto the yoga mat. We can do yoga in lots of different ways, but no matter what kind of practice you're looking for, make it a mindful practice. Use the experience to become more aware of your body, your thoughts, your breath, and even just your heart, your emotional state. And from that awareness, you will find that you suffer much less in life. So thank you so much for joining me today. Always a wonderful pleasure to be here. <laughs>